Okay, so uh, I will finish my uh, probably something about. So okay, I, I also amazed by your talk, and, and then probably that <laughs> I would say attract all the June bombers in a sense. I mean, because you are so attractive in a sense, or you know, your talk is amazing. I guess. Uh, so fantastic talk. I love you know Thursday, of course, the most. I mean, except today. I mean, this is <laughs> such a I mean disaster. Uh, anyway. Uh, since I mean this semester in you know, this seminar series started, I love Thursday the, you know, the most. And you know, as I said earlier, I mean you will be loved by many people, including my teenage daughter and my wife, because you control moms. And also, COVID nineteen pandemic has affected all of us, scientists and engineer, no exception. Among them, young you know researcher have suffered the most due to the limited number of conferences and seminars and labs shut down. But I'm super happy you accepted the COVID challenges and turned them into opportunities to make the world better. So I so I mean, question from Ahmad first and then Matthias later. So Ahmad, do you want to speak up? Hi, Tay. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to, to ask a question. Um, Tim, that was an amazing, amazing talk. Uh, really exciting stuff, and uh, I was, I was really interested in actually the second part of your talk, where you're, you know, engineering these, um, uh, was it logic gates, right? And I yes. see from the, the the responses that you're getting is is very binary. That's quite amazing. I mean, and it has to be very binary to be able to be robust in that, you know, constantly changing environment within the C elegance and for it to have any function. Can I, would you be able to shed some light on some of the engineering principles that, you know, you could infer from the laboratory work that enabled you to get such a nonlinear um, function? So you're talking about how the linear range, like on off status are controlled, is that your Exactly, question? exactly. I'm imagining something along the lines of a dose response curve that has a very strong, you know, hill co a very high hill coefficient, for instance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, um, you asked a really good question. That's why, um, like, my student is out here. So we spend a lot of time with on and off that sometimes like we um, we inject a certain amount of the signal and our interference is too strong we, we see them all on and sometimes we see all off so we try different things so we try on the promoter strength like um, uh, how how tightly they are regulated and we tried like um, the RNA length and double stranded or single stranded. So that's uh, from the RNA level. So there are many details. If I talk about one project, I can share. Uh, but for this RNA difference, one lucky thing is that this RNA does not have to be full length. It can be truncated like 200 base pair, 300 base pair, 700 base pair. We did a try on every topic. We tried different lengths to figure out the best um, like on off binary response. Uh, so. Uh, but that is only for RNA if it works for metabolites. So my suggestion would go for like promoter strengths, like how tight they are regulated. And we can like draw many other projects on screen on the promoter to get a different dynamic range of the promoter, including light inducible, chemical inducible. So those are the tools that we have to do if we want to get to the right dynamic range. Unfortunately, that's what we went through as well. We spent like, again, my student here, like he knows the best. We spent like one, one year or two just trying to figure out the best dynamic range. Um, and uh, for us, I think it's a uh, transcription, um, including promoter and RNAs. Hope that answers your question. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just uh, difficult. That's a good, really good question. That's, <laughs> that's really tackle what I was going through for two years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's amazing. So you really focused actually on the transcriptional level as opposed yeah. to the metabolite uh, biosensor interaction because that would that would affect the threshold as well right yeah yeah so we really look at how much RNA we're producing and the length of the MR, uh, RNA we're producing so those are two we tried but in the end we decided to go to the RNA length it looks mm -hmm. like easier to, for us but if you're looking at mm -hmm. metabolites I think a promoter transcription and translation on the inland production might be the way to go that's what okay. might might be on one piece of perspective yeah Oh, interesting. Thank you very much. No, thank you for the question. Yeah. Well, thank you. So, Matthias, do you have a question? I saw I mean, your question, but I couldn't read that one. Yeah. So, wonderful talk. 
King, uh, congratulations, they're really, really amazing. And I really enjoyed both parts of your talk. And I can definitely see collaborating with you on both things because we do a lot of work on the sensor part as well. Uh, my question was more about the first part of your talk. Um, you talked a little bit um, about uh, using E. coli in order to basically uh, uh, identify promoter sequences, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah, 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 a little bit, yeah. Uh -huh. So one of the things that uh, I've started doing very recently in my lab is uh, characterizing gene clusters. Uh, characterizing gene clusters that basically derive from the gut microbiome. And um, it's, it's a huge challenge to basically be able to identify, well, the open reading frames we can identify, we usually we use anti-SMAS, but the cis regulatory elements like promoters, for example, is, it's really, really hard. So I was wondering if, if the approach that you have developed, for example, with E. coli promoters can be expanded to basically use this training uh, model to identify promoters from bacteria that are not E. coli, but they're still gut microbiome? Uh, that's a good question. So by far, we're working with E. coli promoters. Uh, that's because we don't have data set from other model, uh, non-model system or model system. So um, as like same with the MRI vaccine, if they, they don't have the data set, we cannot do anything. So if you have those data, we can definitely uh, grab it and train our model and predict, and we can look at how well it fits and retrain our model. So this is a process like experiment and uh, a model can really work well together. I'm really, I almost delete, deleted that session because the time, but I'm really happy I talk about it. So yeah. we, we need data. So if you have those data, I'm happy, uh, we're happy to try and see how sure. well that's uh, inject to the next. And uh, it's not only for promoter, if you have all the information you want to identify, we can try that as well. Right. Um, again, we, we need data, yeah. Yeah, some of these bacteria, the gut microbiome, are basically uh, known bacteria, like Archimensia, for example. We heat a lot of this um, different Archimensia species. So potentially, yeah, we, we would have access to promoter information. So yeah, maybe that could be one way to, to work together. Uh, Sounds for, great. Yeah, we should talk. Yeah. And I think yeah. that topic is exciting, the microbiome world. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, 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 we should talk. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. I, I, to be honest, I almost put that part out because it's not related to MRI, but I'm happy I talk about it in two sure. slides, yeah. Mm -hmm. So any other question? Actually, I have a question, but I wanted to ask, I mean, after, I mean, you know, waiting for other question. So Wilfred, you have any comment <laughs> for your uh, former? Uh, Except not... being proud, no. <laughs> Okay, that's the best to comment, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. That's like the joy of our job because I mean, our students become such a beautiful and wonderful you know, researcher and then also generating more student, uh, you know, wonderful one and then product. And that is the reward of our job. Even though our salary level is not high enough compared to my own student <laughs> in the company. I'm talking about, you know, Tatenda Siopora joined Pfizer and then developed COVID vaccine. Hey, he promoted to, you know, senior, uh, you know, scientist level and then his salary much higher than myself. <laughs> <laughs> so any other question? Oh, go ahead. Ahmad, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, can I sneak in another question, please? Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. <clears throat> so you have a really interesting setup with the C. elegans and the uh, bacteria with the logic gates in them, right? Um, uh, I I've been looking at some other research, just random reading here and there, and uh, the gut microbiome sort of actually influences uh, uh, ner the nervous system, the structure of nerves in the guts as well, right? Now, the setup that you have is essentially C. elegans, which have been used as a, as a model organism for studying the nervous system as well. Other than the interaction of your microbes with the host, do you think there could be, you know, further research going forward into looking at perhaps the interaction that happens also the other way around, how that interaction influences, you know, the, the change in the neural network system and actually then the behavior of C. elegans over a longer time frame? Oh, so I repeat your question. You are asking about how uh, 
bacteria affect the new uh, nerve system in C. elegans and that how uh, change the behavior of uh, uh, C. elegans? Yeah, because there's a two way interaction at the moment, you, be, you know, in, in the short term, when you inject the microbes, they are influencing the behavior of the C. elegans. But over a longer time frame, you would have the interaction also feeding back to the bacteria and then creating a whole new maybe steady state of the, of the entire system. Um, and that could have, you know, implications for understanding the gut micro microbiome and the brain sort of interaction there as well. This is really interesting for, you know, all sorts of brain sort of diseases like schizophrenia and so on? Oh, yeah, that's a good question because people definitely um, figure out that there is correl correlation um, between like those uh, nerve disorder disease animal and their microbiome. I think it's a mutual, it, it's difficult to say who started, but there's definitely new, mutual inter uh, interactions about how they uh, inter uh, affect the other like in the long run. Um, so, um, I'm talking about from C. elegans perspective. I, I, um, we can definitely study how they co-involve, um, because like this kind of engineering bacteria can get in C. elegans and next generation, next generation. Uh, it's just like it's difficult to in, um, uh, like affect them from genome level, but from phenotype level, I think it's possible. Uh, we, uh, that's really good perspective. Like we can see like uh, different generations how that or even within the same generation, even a little bit up from the incubation of bacteria C. elegans will change their behavior already. So we found that um, a little bit upfront incubation will change their neurotransmitter uh, like level about how they like certain food, now like food. So this is definitely happening. Um, so that's some of the topic we are doing in the lab, trying to see how this earlier exposure or midterm uh, exposure changed the C. elegans uh, phen uh, phenology. That's what we're doing. We're not doing on the nerve level. So, uh, but that's a good uh, uh, good question that we can think about after this uh, conversation and think about uh, if uh, from nerve level, uh, how feasible that is. Um, from God's nerve, I don't think C. elegans is the best model to study these kind of behaviors. Maybe we should go to more complicated uh, uh, animals. Uh, but I, I do think the, your question is valid about there is mutual interaction. So what are doing on those uh, physiology, including longevity development, even including like sexual behaviors, uh, not on the nerve level yet, but that's a good question. Yeah, you hope that answers your question. I I, I did not think that way, but uh, that's what I come to me when you ask this question. Yeah. 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 yeah no. Good. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's awesome, actually. So I actually, you, I I believe you're talking about gut brain axis, and I'm actually doing such you know, research myself. So I can oh. talk in after you know our official sessions. I you know happy to share my you know, data with you. And also, but WOM is the fantastic model to understand the probiotic, you know, effect. Also what, what you know, we heard today, you know, that's a fantastic one. Actually, we also use the WOM. Oh, uh, you also use the WOM, okay. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, we, you know, for another kind of goal, I mean, so uh, I'll talk about, I'll share that one, you know, because I, I wanted to you know, end because, you know, Matthias need to leave, I mean, in uh -huh. one minute. So yeah. and I want to officially cross if there is no, Additional question. We have the another thirty minute. I mean, or uh, on, until you know the doctor, you know, son. I mean, have the time. So we will have the, some chance to ask more question after my close the today's I mean official session. So thank you all for joining and staying today. And really, really apologize for the Zoom bomb. It is the first time in my whole life. Also, I mean, when I and this is my first time. You know, when we attacked. Uh, entire the you know seminar series. Uh, previously we have the you know Zoom, uh, not Zoom. I mean the webinar. Uh, so we have actually protective, but this time you know I start. I mean Zoom meeting uh, since last week, and then we finally got you know that means I mean people know about our seminar globally. That's a good <laughs> sign, in a sense. Uh, so I wanted to make this as inclusive as possible, but it was completely my fault due to my naive, naive kind of idea. So we'll meet again next week on February 17th, <clears> Thursday, <throat> the same time, the same Zoom link. Uh, I probably need to change something, the setup. Uh, I'll do that today. And then we will have the professor John Dodik from also IPI, 
of course, the National Academy of uh, Engineering member, and also Professor Lucas Burgard from UPenn. And as usual, the follow informal chat will occur without recording. So if you want to discuss more, please stay, and then I will stop recording. And thank you so much. Um, thank you so much still sticking with me, us, uh, even after that ridiculous uh, Zoom bomb. Thank you. Thank you all for showing up. I really appreciate it. So, thank, you. thank you, Matthew. Thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. We have the two pioneer speakers today, and then you are uh, very lucky. <laughs> thank okay. you.